Hi, I'm Danny. And I'm Jennifer. And welcome to the October edition of Pierce TV. This month we'll hear from Luann Wolden from the BTEC IBEST program on the Fort Silicon campus. From our digital design department, we'll show you 3D films and also images from our Photoshop class. Our drama department will feature readings from SLAM, the Pierce College Student Literary Arts Magazine. We'll feature film shorts from this summer's students' video production and DVD authoring class and also hear from our advising department, Leslie Watts. First up is Steve Crane on the brand new Diagnostic Health and Fitness Technician program on the Fort Stilcom campus. One of the new developments within the Health Science, Wellness, and Physical Education Department here at Pierce College is our new Diagnostic Health and Fitness Technician Instructor Certificate Program. Uh, there's really not a lot like it throughout the country at the community college level in that it provides the, the best possible training to pass the ACSM's personal trainer certificate review process and also provides hands-on lab experience at becoming one of the best, if not the best, personal trainer types of skill sets uh, in our country. We have a brand new $9 million facility and within that facility is our lab which enables our students to learn about and actually practice and do VO2 max assessment with a metabolic cart uh, hydrostatic weighing, um, all of the state-of-the-art types of things that people would normally learn at a four-year college at a major university where they'd have an exercise physiology lab. And our lab here, which is brand new, facilitates that type of learning for students who want to become personal trainers or health and fitness professionals, as we like to call them, because it's much more full-blown than just a personal trainer type of application. The exciting thing, too, along with excellent uh, gold standard education and preparation for the various certificates that a student would want to get to function and have a career in this field also has to do with the fact that uh, we have uh, really excellent challenging curriculum that we've drawn from a variety of different areas providing the very best training. Here within the new program in a new building students can get a one-year certificate um, associated with the DHFT and then if they wanted to they could move on to a second year and achieve an associate's degree associated with that certificate which would actually provide them with a, a superb excellent foundation for moving into anything in a, a health related uh, career area whether it be medical, nutritional, any type of physical therapy type of uh, career choice lots of different exciting things uh, would be available to a student here at Pierce College in this brand new program and those who were accessing the route of the Diagnostic Health and Fitness Technician Instructor position. Here are some 3D films from our Digital Design Beginning 3D Animation and Modeling class. Hey, hon, you ready to go? Honey, don't forget to turn out the light.
this month until October 24th, the art gallery at Pierce College, Fort Stillicombe is featuring artist Becky Fries. For Becky, art making is a way of telling stories. She intended to be a short story writer once, but too much paint got under her fingernails and she had to keep going with color. Figures, gestures, textures, poetry, and light patterns all inspire her and hold potential for scenarios and commentary on the human experience all over this planet. Becky earned a Master of Fine Arts degree from Central Washington University and a BFA from Arizona State University. She has been exhibiting extensively for over two decades and has received many jurors awards and honors. She exhibits regularly at the Grand Impromptu Cooperative Gallery in Tacoma, Washington and is currently teaching part-time at the University of Puget Sound. The Fort Stillicum Art Gallery hours are Monday through Thursday, 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. and Friday, 8 a.m. to noon. You're watching Pierce TV, a production of the Digital Design Program at Pierce College. From the Pierce College BTEC department, here's Luann Wolden. I have the pleasure of working with the IBEST program here at Pierce College in the Business Information Technology Department. IBEST stands for Integrated Basic Skills, Basic Education Skills Training. And I have the pleasure of working with it both as a program coordinator for the BTEC department and also as a classroom instructor. S students in the IBEST program are integrated into traditional classes but they have the, they're fortunate to have not only a content instructor, but also an academic support instructor. Right now, this quarter, I have students who are enrolled in the Computer Applications Lab in our department. The Computer Applications Lab is set up to offer one credit modules in areas of word processing, spreadsheet, presentation software like PowerPoint, personal information management software like Outlook, and of course, Access or database management software. So this quarter, the IBEST students, there's 15 of them, are taking the CalLab class and they're taking five one credit modules in the area of word processing, spreadsheets, and personal information management software. When I started the IBEST program, it was like hitting the lotto to me. I never thought I'd be going to college at my age. Um, it's a great program to be in. You, know, you always have teachers that are helping you. There's always at least two teachers in, in your class helping you at all times. We have a great support group um, with our teacher, Christine Searney, and um, Luann Walden, and Deborah Rinke. Um, it's a great environment. You know, not only are the teachers helping you, but the students work together and help each other, which makes it a great uh, teamwork environment. So not only do they have myself in there as the content instructor, but they also have our iBEST academic support instructor. Just to kind of give you an example of how that works for teen teaching is that I could be going over students with a test. I might be talking to them about what they did correctly on their test, what kind of mistakes they made on their test, or I might be giving them back their papers and talking to them about, again, what they did right on their papers and where they need to improve. I might also be giving students their tests, making sure the testing environment is appropriate for them. And I might also then be helping students with understanding the course material or the understanding in the course syllabus. The Christine, or the IBEST support instructor, might be wandering around the room, helping students follow directions, helping them interpret the directions, and helping them be successful uh, following instructions and getting their papers turned in properly. She also provides encouragement for them and just helps them understand the, the course material. So it's a really nice marriage of team teaching with each one of us having separate responsibilities and roles in the classroom. And it helps the students be really successful because they don't just have the benefit of one instructor, they have the benefit of two instructors. So in addition to the computer applications lab where the students come twice a week for their classes, the students also have the benefit of a support class. And in the support class, they work on mastering the concepts that, that were presented in their um, lecture, in their Cal Lab material throughout the week. They also get the opportunity to study the vocabulary and get a heads up, 
you might say, of what's to come in the next week. So they can be prepared in terms of vocabulary and concepts before they actually start doing the work. We find that this really helps not only ease any concerns that they might have, but it also helps them just be more successful. We find that the IBEST students actually sometimes do better because they've had the benefit of this extra support class. And we're encouraged that we have had a 100% retention with our IBEST students. We've not lost any of them so far. And we're looking forward to seeing them graduate soon and going out into the world and being successful. Some of them may, in addition to going out and getting jobs, may choose to actually come back to Pierce College and um, earn a two-year degree or a, an additional one-year certificate. And we think that's just awesome. Over the next few episodes, we'll feature dramatic readings from SLAM, our student literary arts magazine. The readings were recorded at Pour It For this past spring and feature Patrick Dougherty's drama students as well as staff from the Pierce College District. Hi, I'm Fiona Larkham and I will be performing Smile by Kristen Marks from Volume 6. The photographer creeped me out. He had dark brown curly hair and a hero's square jaw. He was a handsome man, but something about him just didn't settle my nerves. He seemed to live in the past. His antiques were scattered around his photography studio. And any time he would open the dark room door, shrills and screeches escaped. The noise made the hair on my arms and the back of my neck stand on end. I wondered how anyone could possibly smile after hearing such a noise. He had a strict rule, individual pictures for adults only. If a couple wanted to take individual pictures, he would schedule the man first and the woman would be scheduled three weeks later. I asked him why such a strange rule and he said it was a superstition. I didn't understand. My raised eyebrows and murmured, hmm must have revealed my confusion, for he continued. He said, back in my day, my people believed that taking one's photograph was a way for evil to steal one's soul. And he didn't want to be responsible for a family's soul being taken away by evil. He was a slave to the camera. I didn't believe him, because superstition is a train's brake screeching. And in that moment, he said, smile, and a light, unlike a camera's light, flashed. My name is Josh Johnson, I'll be performing Ordinary by Sue Eisman from uh, Volume 1. There's a patch of soil 13 feet in from Aurora Avenue uh, near the Freedom Drive exit. It's the only patch of soil for 27 miles. It, it measures four feet by 18 inches and, well, in the rare spring rains, there's a small amount of grass that pokes its way to the surface. The space exists between the concrete, concrete slur, uh, sl slabs of the curb and the concrete slabs of the sidewalk, the last shock of greenery that hasn't been mulled over by the city's industrial policies. Well, there's a bird buried there, uh, a canary. The boy from a third story of an apartment building buried it last year. Well, a man leaped from the rooftop of that building one year ago today. As he fell, his body landed, uh, made a long crack right down the middle of the concrete sidewalk. People walk over that crack every single day, completely oblivious to that man's death. It took the paramedics seven minutes for them to arrive to drag his body away. As he lay there, his blood ran down the middle of the crack and into the soil, staining it a dark, rich, roundish red. A dandelion bloomed later that year, cold and dry. It was left unattended and uh, unwatered. It was later destroyed and never returned. You know, on that corner last year, a woman was mugged. The thief emerged from the dark shadows of the alley and beat her senseless, leaving her lying there with a broken jaw and a concussion, and then taking her coat and her purse. Her tooth is still wedged in the crack right here. A small amount of uh, change was scattered too, but it was quickly picked up by a homeless man uh, living in the alley, 54 cents in all, which was then later uh, put together with previous acquisitions and bought a can of cat food. There were six cats in all. Well, there were seven, but one had been hit by a pickup truck earlier one morning. 
So he had darted across the street to catch a mouse and was caught off guard by the oncoming headlights. The, boy, the rat survived. Uh, it was picked up by the boy from the third story of the apartment building. His mom took it and flushed it down the toilet and grounded him for three weeks, though. <laughs> well, the boy would uh, let her leave the house when his mom wasn't there and visit the old homeless man in the alley who would tell the boy how much that soil meant to him. That soil, the old man would say, is proof that there is still goodness in the world. Thank you. My name is Marilou Hall, and I'm doing My Mother Hoards Potato Chips by Katie Nelson, and it was in Volume 8. She orders them all the way from Minnesota, those dill pickle flavored things. Old Dutch, I think. Anyway, she won't share. Not even when I'm making sandwiches. She'll rub her greasy fingers together, watching little crumbs fall to the floor. It's unhealthy, and I get angry. Oh, not because I like them, oh. But because I don't. It's the way she taunts with me with them. She's waving her fingers in the air like she's trying to feed a baby. And then she pulls her hand back, shoving them in her mouth. I think I'll order some. But when she runs out, we'll see who's laughing. <laughs> I'm here at Pierce College. You're not gonna believe this. We found it. I can't believe we found it. It's huge. This is Shauna Baker coming to you live from Pierce College, where the students here have made an amazing discovery. I was just playing around with my phone, and I looked up and I saw it. I can't believe I found it. Remember, you saw it here first. You're watching Pierce TV, a production of the Digital Design Program at Pierce College. Pierce College recently changed quite a few of our course numbers and titles. One of those changes was Ed 110 to College 110. Here's Leslie Watts from our advising department to talk more about College 110. A lot of people ask what our Education 110 Student Success course is. It's actually a three credit class that's equal to a class that's required at most four-year universities now for all freshmen. It can be called First Year Experience, Freshman 101, Introduction to College. There are a lot of different names. The bottom line, it's a success course that's tailored for students starting out in college who want to be able to get their act together. This is much more than just a study techniques class. Yes, we absolutely do cover how to take notes, how to take tests, overcoming test and math anxiety, memory techniques, but it also covers a lot of other things. Who are we trying to reach? We're trying to reach the first generation student, and that's the student who had parents that never went to college or a lot of our students who are midlife career changers. They have been in a career for years and now, due to whatever circumstances, they're coming back to school to learn a new career, but it necessitates their getting back into an academic environment. And then we have, of course, students who, as I call them, are high school push-outs. They really didn't know what their career goal was going to be or that they were going to think about going to college while they were in high school, and so they really never learned how to learn. And it's also a great prep class for students planning to apply to programs that have competitive admission, nursing, um, medical school, schools of business, and so on. Some of the other things that we might cover during this time are things like 20 tips for top grades, 20 things that involve not just study techniques, but also other dynamics of keeping yourself motivated, keeping your attitude up, uh, what is your learning style and what happens when your learning style doesn't match a teacher's teaching style? How can you still compensate? How do I know I've picked the right major? And if I don't know my major, how in the world do I solidify and figure out what route I should go? How do I understand the advising registration system of this college so that I can make an education plan for the rest of the time that I'm here? How does the seven habits of highly effective people that Stephen Covey has made so famous affect me as a, as a college student? What are some of the academic uh, support resources that I can use on campus so that, again, I can augment my education and make sure that I'm getting 
tutoring or assistance while I'm here. All of these things are put in place because we want to keep you. We not only want to recruit you here to college, but we want to make sure that you connect with other students, that you have a meaningful connection with our faculty, that you know why you're here, and that you have a plan about why you're here. But most importantly, during this journey, we want you to know to learn how to learn, okay? So that you can keep learning, not only learning throughout your whole life and establish lifelong habits, but so you can make sure to keep that foundation of knowledge that you're gonna to need to go after whatever career you're gonna go into. Next up is a series of film shorts and parodies from this summer's digital design, video, and DVD class. New laptop, $800. Wireless internet connection, $49. Chatting with your cyber girlfriend. Come on, girl. Yeah, it's me. Priceless. There are some girls that money can buy. For everything else, there is MasterCard. Today on Cooking with Susan, I'm going to show you how to make the perfect ramen and make sure you get the best broth every time. It'll be a simple step-by-step -step process, so just follow along with us. Lucky. Yes, Miss Susan? Where's the ramen? I told you, the store was out. Do you see the camera? Yep. Do you see the camera? Yes. yes. Okay, so you know we're filming today. You understand that concept? Yes, ma'am. Then where's the ramen for today? I told you to have the ramen on the day we were filming, which is today, by the way. So, why don't we have ramen? Oh, I'll go get it. I'm sorry. I'll, okay. I'll, I'll... Don't get me my ramen! I hate this show. Why do I even need to be on the show? I mean, the instructions are on the back of the package. Don't worry about it. They can edit all of it out. Girl with no confidence! Yes? Find me something to drink. Yes, ma'am. I hate this show. I hate it. Explain to me again why I'm doing this without the seasoning. Somebody explain it to me now! Well, you see... Secret. You only put the seasoning on what you want to put putting it on and pouring half of it out. And if you're so smart, why don't you do it? I'm taking a break. This is my show. Put it down. I quit. Put it down. Put it down. This is my show. You can't quit. You're fired. No, I really do hate this show. So very much. I used to be a real chef. No. I was practically famous. Show up. You done. I hate this show! I hate it!
On a side note out there to all you Raiders, make sure to pick up your Huskies and paintball tickets before they're gone. You can pick them up at the Fort Stillicom Student Programs Office. Also on October 21st, make sure to come out at 6 o'clock and catch Jeff Davis Ghost Hunter. He'll be here lecturing about his job and then he'll be ghost hunting our very own Pierce College. Make sure to bring your cameras. We leave you this month with a photo montage from our digital design class. If you'd like to watch this episode again, you can watch it at pierce.ctc.edu forward slash Pierce TV. We'll be back in November with another new episode of Pierce TV. Thanks, Thanks for, for watching. watching.